Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. I got the veteran, Mr. Amazing, Mr. Jimmy Palmiotti. Jimmy, thank you so much for being here, man. I would love to go through everything that you've accomplished as your intro, but I, I was trying to be really respectful of your time, and it might take an hour to get from, from writer, inker, uh, TV, games. I mean, you've done it kind of all, Mr. Jimmy, man. That's pretty impressive. It's, what a it's career. Cool. It's called survival, Tommy. You got you, <laughs> you have to kind of you have to kind of in this field you kind of have to do a little bit of everything in order to uh, make a living. You know, um, yeah. It sucks it has to be that way, but um, you know, comics aren't comics are big in the world as far as people know who Iron Man is and they know Spider Man. But the reality of comics is, you know, you you have maybe a hundred thousand people that buy comics. You know, um, and it's not a lot when you consider how much they cost and how long they take. So. So I, I've been hustling since uh, I was, uh, you know, since I was in high school. I actually went to the high school of art and design to learn art. I've, I've been hustling since then. So uh, it's a lifelong hustling. It, the resume is is huge and long, and I I, uh, I feel it. You can't see. I have all my shelves over there are filled with things I've done, and I'm just like, I don't even like to look at it. It, it gets me a little depressed because I'm always thinking about what I'm going to do tomorrow. And uh, but but the past is what it is. And, you know, that's how it got me here. Yeah. I mean, uh, from a fan perspective, right, you've done so many things that, you know, you've done enough stuff to where everyone is a fan, I think, of something that you have done because you have such a portfolio. So obviously, Jonah Hex is absolutely amazing. I got my issue one right here that uh, I was trying to find you and I, I did see you, but. You were so busy at the image booth, I didn't want to bother you. So yeah, you should have uh, came, came over. You should have came over. Ah, uh, it's okay. I would have gave you a stack of uh, Todd McFarlane signed books. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of grabbed them and just say, "Here, take one." You know, uh, I'm sure you'd love that. Todd's uh, Todd's one of the most laid back guys. He's yeah. he's uh, boy working for him and Thomas and the guys up there. It's like a dream. They're, they're, they they. Uh, they kind of understand what you do when they hire you. So they, yeah. they kind of leave you to do your thing. And, you know, and then Todd, Todd's one of those hands-on creators. So he's like once a month gets on a zoom call and checks in with everybody and, you know, how's it going? You're happy with going on. He's always checking to make sure you're happy. And, and, uh, it's something we're not, I'm not too familiar with because when you work for the big companies, they, you know, they, they send you an email that, that usually it's, where is the work or, Hey, can you do this or whatever? But Todd's Todd is very interested in uh, in people, and um, yeah. and uh, it's probably why he gets the best work out of everybody. Everybody working for him, they're all on like uh, you know they're 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 uh, aiming for the stars with Todd. They're, everybody wants to impress him, myself included, and uh, by doing a great job. So it's kind of nice to have that kind of support um, and and that interaction with uh, somebody working for him because I, I have to have it for myself in my own books i have to kind of yeah. be my own cheerleader but it's nice to have somebody else cheering once in a while so i would think amanda would be back there at least patting you on the back once in a while <laughs> yeah she's you know she's my day-to-day -day, um i have to be her cheerleader too because she's yeah. drawing she's upstairs drawing right now and and uh we kind of have to stay after each other uh with work because when you freelance you know, it's I, I'm a calendar person. I have like a, I have a calendar right next to me, with dates, things to do, and everything. Um, and she tends to be more of a free spirit. Um, so I make like lists up, and I give her a list, and I put it by her door, and I tell her, you know, check it off as you do it. But she's very much in demand all the time, so uh, we call it demand over here. And um, and uh, so she has to kind of pick and choose these days, and uh, yeah. it's, it's a good it's a good problem. But she's also a very slow artist, so um, you know she can only do a couple of things, and uh, you know it, her career is a lot different than mine. And she's been doing it actually longer than me, you know. Yeah, just kind of create together. It's a lot of years we've been making comics. Um, yeah, but we're constant. We're constantly trying to get better. It's like it's a really fun thing because we're both trying to outdo each other and everyone around us. And you know, the reality is, is people that are much more talented. Uh, than both of us in the field, but we're trying always to shoot for, you know, what's the next best thing we can do? What, how can we take this one step further? And I think that's what keeps this field interesting to, especially me, because I'm trying to get better at my writing. I'm trying to figure out the stories I want to tell rather than what I have to do to pay bills. And um, 
And then when I have to do those gigs where I'm paying bills, how can I make it more fun for me? You know, and that has a lot to do with how I approach writing different titles. Is is there something here that I can grab onto? If not, I just turned down a pretty big book recently in DC, and it's one it's one of their top three characters because I felt like I, I just felt like it wasn't the right time for me to write it. I just felt like I, I, somebody else would be doing this book better. Um, the pay is great, but the reality is I, I, I kind of pick and choose because I feel like if I'm not putting 100% into it, I should, probably shouldn't do it. I probably should let somebody else uh, do it. And, and, and I'm fortunate that I have, I can do that. And I always do recommend friends of mine that are looking for work. I would say, you know, you okay. got to get, you got to get her to write it or you got to get this guy to draw it or something. Um, but it is the, it is the thing as you get older, you realize that, yeah, you you know, you only have so much time, put your time into stuff you really believe in. And usually um, it'll pay off. I am not one of those writers that wins awards. You know, I'm not one of those guys people ever vote and say, oh, he's the, I am a guy that's trying to write comics for people that like to read comics. Yeah, yeah. The best way I could say, because I'm a collector too. I'm, a, I'm, an, I'm an annoying collector. I have to have my books, I have to have my <laughs> comics, I have to have my comic art. My, my place is filled with... <laughs> stuff <laughs> um, it's probably like, a pretty cool like museum if you were to walk through there for any other fan right yeah i mean i can i can tilt the camera it's just yeah books, bookshelves full of stuff you know um, i love it i love and it, it and it's and, I, and and you know and then it's not even including my original art collection and then i have beer bottles that oh my god i could just reach right here and grab one thing to you, show collect, you. you collect oh. beer bottles no but i i uh it's it's thing called uh it, it's called cut uh, uh, dutch courage and it was a, a bottles we did for a Chicago company, and it's me and me and Darwin Cook. Darwin Cook. That is incredible. And then um, each bottle has a comic strip that me and Darwin did on it. I've never seen or heard of that before. That is yeah, incredible, was, Jimmy. Like a lot of weird things. That, and Darwin and I did it. Like, I came up with the idea of Dutch courage because that was a term. Uh, I mean, my well, everybody knew, sort of knows that term, but we used to use it like before we had to do something tough. We take a drink and. Now we had Dutch courage, and the joke of the the bottles. If you read it in a row, it's a guy who's drinking to get courage to, you know, ask this girl out, and you know all this kind of stuff. And of course, he screws up everything. The guy literally <laughs> dies by the end. But um, we kind of did it for a company. <laughs> we did it for a company in Chicago that released it for uh, a couple of weeks, you know, and it sold out. Um, but it's like I, you know, there's a lot of things I've done that are just oddball. Uh, things because they're fun yeah was and, it uh, like a full-on like comic book like 28 24 pages worth of story that was on each bottle and you had to collect the bottles to get the whole story no it's it's no. If you bought if you bought a six pack it was the whole story okay that's so and awesome it, though what a great did, idea we did the classic thing where you know the, he, the somebody kicks sand, he's down on the beach with a girl and they kick sand in his face and then it goes in a very strange direction because, of course, Darwin and I are working on it. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the late great Darwin Cook, and um, and it's just ironic and crazy, you know. Yeah. As as you would expect it, it doesn't go where it should go. Where he has his day in the sun, it actually things get worse and worse for him as he's getting drunker and drunker, like <laughs> yeah, like, like any kind of reality we have. But. It was, it was, you know, and that came from Darwin used to, used to live right near me. He had a summer, he had a winter place here in Florida. I'm down in Florida. So he used to come over every other morning with a cup of coffee for Amanda. And then we used to sit there and talk about what books we want to do. And that's where a lot of the Jonah Hexes came from. Really? Is, yeah. Cause he would ask me, he'd say, you know, what, what are you working on now? And I said, well, I'm, you know, I told, I remember I told him, um, uh, I was thinking of doing a story with wolves and, you know, whatever. And he said, can you set it in Canada? And I said, yeah, I could even put the Canadian Mounties in it. And that was the first Jonah Hex we did. And then he, you know, he's asking me if I had anything special with issue 50 of Jonah Hex. And I said, yeah, I want to kill 50 people in it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And he, and, and he says, well, what's the story? And I said, well, it's actually about Tallulah Black and Jonah's uh, relationship. Justin and I were working on that. And we, we pitched him the idea and he goes, I'm drawing it. That's it. And he just he just started drawing. So, you know, it was great having him around because we would do crazy things like that. Or <laughs> say, hey, can I get a cover from you? And of course he would do it in three seconds for me because he's, he's yeah. a good guy. Um, but that's the fun of this business is it collaborating with people. I yeah. think it's something I've always enjoyed. That's why the Jonah Hexes have, you know, Justin Gray and Jimmy Pomerati yeah. 
because yeah. Justin and I had a ball writing him. I, actually, I was just on the phone with him for like an hour today. Still talking. Oh, how we, cool. We still talk. We still, because we own a lot of characters together. Um, so we still talk about what should we do and should we do another book of that, you know. Um, Sounds like then, something might be in the works in the near future then if you're having yeah, those we, kind we of were conversations. Yeah, we talking about G.I. Zombie because it was something we loved doing. Uh, yeah. And we, we, you know, it was a very small audience, but DC was super cool to return the rights to us. So they gave us back yeah. rights to the characters. So now we own all the books and the characters. So we're talking about maybe doing some short stories, you know, separate and then put them into one book. We're, we're, we're always... Yeah. You know, the only thing that stops us from doing more is, of course, we have to make a living. Um, yeah. that, that thing gets in the way. But uh, <laughs> one day somebody will airlift a couple of million dollars to, to uh, me and Justin. Then we can just keep writing 400 things. Uh, you you got to put it into like an omnibus and then have a new story at the end to get people excited. And right now that's exploding. I mean, you see what Skybound's doing with G.I. Joe re-releasing the omnibuses from Larry Hama. Like the nostalgia, yeah. Jimmy. Everyone's jumping to nostalgia right now. I know. I, know. I, I, still, I still put out a Painkiller Jane book like twice a year. Yeah, And yeah. Um, I'm still talking to Joe about getting to do Ash. You know, yeah. it's Ash too, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, nostalgia's great, but I'm also a guy that's, I'm, I'm constantly looking to the future. So, um <laughs> I'm very torn, right? Because my comic collection is very old. You know, I like Golden Age and Silver Age yeah. books, right? Yeah. And uh, I think I like Golden Age just because it's before I was born, so I never saw them. And then Golden Age, because uh, uh, Silver Age and Golden Age, you know, all all that stuff. I grew up in the '60s and '70s buying comics, so a lot of it is me buying my collection back. Yeah, yeah. But you know, as much as I do that, I'm kind of like also the guy that's I'm, I'm trying to keep up with what people are. Are reading right now yeah. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm i saw your through. your ex where you kind of showed all the books that yeah you're, yeah, I'm yeah of, I'm, that's I'm, cool I'm, I'm plowing through a bunch of the books right now um you know i'm trying to see like what people you know what what are they absorbing like what what are, what are the things these books are like people love them and i'm trying to find out you know it, it's uh it's manga it's manga you know so the manga work has a different beat to it yeah. um but also the stories about uh, unusual possibilities like regular people that are thrown into like these crazy uh fan fantastic uh stories then then some feel like some feel like movies i've seen like spy yeah. family feels a little yeah. bit like i've seen it before but it does its own little cool thing about it um but i think yeah. if you don't if you don't constantly keep up with things i think you kind of get a little stale after a while so i i try to I, it's why i post something like that because i try to inspire people like hey think outside yeah. the box a little bit and and try something mm -hmm. different. Um, I'm not saying you have to make that your thing that you collect because right. well, books are bulky, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I I, try, I was hating manga because I'm a comic guy and I grew up on comics. I'm like, right. I'm not reading that crap, right? That's destroying comic books. You know, everything that could go wrong with comics is all because of it. And then you yeah. know, I have four. I have four kids, and my youngest oh. is 18. Yeah, and that's that's all she watches. I cannot get her to look at a comic book, but she's in there and she's watching. Uh, uh, the one that she got me on is Berserk, and I don't know if you've read that one. Oh my! Yeah, I actually, I actually just is Incredible. that the guy with the buzzsaw face, or is that a different one? No, that's uh, that's oh, a different oh, I know one. what I know what Berserk. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Has yeah. A giant sword. Oh, it's incredible! And she got me on that. Yeah, I I can't stop watching it. Do you know, like, when's the next one? When's the next one? I'm just like Demon Slayer on Netflix. Got into yeah, that. Demon now Slayer. I, is, yep, I'm that's addicted. Fun. So yeah, now now I like this stuff. I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> well, you have, you know, I I think at its core, yeah. at its core, it's still comics. It's still it really comics. is, yeah. You know, and the ja the Japanese uh, books, you know, they have a different pacing. I mean, they, they tend mm -hmm. to they tend to spend a lot of time in the head of the person. Yeah, a little bit. You know, you'll see like yeah. you'll you'll always have. I, I there's a thing I'm I'm finding a couple of things in common. Right, they always introduce a character who's pretty much a loner. Yeah, that's and true. They talk to <laughs> and they have something they're into, whether it's music or art or this and that. And that <laughs> they're misunderstood by everybody else, but they have a doorway to another world where they are understood and appreciated, and they can save the day. Okay, so that might be like forty percent of the books that I've been reading, right? But I get it because it's it's about people. Kids read them, and they're in a place in their head where they're like, okay, maybe I don't love what's going on, but let me read this and. I could go to another world where everything is kind of cool and magical. And 
I get it. It's escapism, and we, we're that's what we do for a living. And, and it's uh, a business, yeah. So, um, so I appreciate. I try to appreciate everything. I mean, I grew up reading heavy metal. Like that was one of my favorite yeah. things. Yeah. Um, because I felt like I was getting away with everything. Uh, it felt like <laughs> a little bit Playboy, a little bit adult, a little bit crazy. Yeah. And then it introduced me to European artists who I didn't know. Um, but that's where my influences are all over the place these days. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's a good thing, though, right? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like you said, constantly learning. And it's kind of hard. Like I, I'm almost 50, and I feel like I want to learn less, and I just want to enjoy the things that I used to like that I maybe forgot about. So like you, I go back, I end up buying stuff that I had to sell when I first got married, right. um, which is enjoyable, right? Because it does yeah, bring kind of that nostalgia feeling but then the you know price, you have a, the, the price, price isn't enjoyable but the, no the, <laughs> collecting, collecting, it's tough to spend yeah. 30 dollars on something you bought when it came out for 25 cents it's really yeah hard. you know you know my uh, first comic book i ever bought because i i come from a very big military family so both grandfathers fought in World War II. My great grandfather on my mother's side was in World War I. My father was in the Marines at the end of Vietnam. So he was never in Vietnam, but you know, right. he was part of that era. Um, and I try I had a hip disease, so I wasn't able, or I would have been in the middle military because I tried. I tried to become a Marine and I wasn't accepted for medical reasons. Yeah. My first comic book I ever got was Nam. Oh, really? Yes. Nom. I actually which is crazy that. like who i know that's why i bring it up like it what issue my, did it, you start working on it was one of my first comics i inked for um for uh marvel comics it was the nom yep. um it was over a guy mike harris and then another guy kevin kabasic and i actually worked on the first punisher in the nom <laughs> uh, issue, i, I want to say it was like issue 48 49 or oh, 50, okay. something like right um but i remember working on that with a guy kevin kabasic who was an assistant editor that liked to draw and I was encouraging him. I'm like, you should just do a book. And then they gave him that. And uh, yeah, man. I mean, and of course, we revisited later with uh, Marvel Knights yeah. when when uh, Garth came in and did the flashback. Yeah. But um, yeah, man. I mean, you know, the Nan was uh, that was uh, those Michael Golden covers and uh, yeah, you know, yes. it was just a cool book, man. I mean, you know, I, I I'm I'm from the Sergeant Rock era, so yeah, yeah. Rock and the Losers and all that kind of stuff and. Uh, my dad was in World War II, so of course, you know, I kind of related, uh, would be like, think I was relating to my dad on some level, but um, yeah, it, genre work was my work. It, I mean, it was the stuff I loved, and and that's why, you know, the Jonah Hex behind you, it's yeah. it's a Western. It's not, it never sold well. It, it was never. I don't understand show. that. Like, there, there's um, few series that have had a huge impact. Obviously, I love Jonah Hex. Um, Robert Venditti's Hawkman, I think, is yeah. a masterpiece. Like I put that in the same area. Like there's certain, and then obviously you have like a Jeff Johns and his Green Lantern, which was sure. ten years long. But you have Blackest Night. Like all of those for me are like my favorite stories. So you know, every few years I get hooked on it. And Jonah Hex was one of them. Um, but yeah, I, they're all in the same compartment in my brain when I think of some of my favorite series ever. Right. Um, and uh, when I heard that you were on Gunslinger and the the type of Gunslinger that you were on. I yeah. got warm and fuzzies about Jonah Hex. Maybe somehow those type of stories being combined a little bit since it is a Western. The uh, it's 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 title is Deadly Tales of the Gunslinger. Yeah. And it's a, it's a monthly title. It literally drops right before Thanksgiving. So it's yeah. like the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and that's the first issue. I'm working on issue eight right now. So that gives you an idea how far ahead we are on it. And it's. Um, and, uh, you know, Patrick and I are, are trying to hustle, hustle, hustle on it for Todd. Um, Patrick Reynolds is the artist on it. And um, it is basically how Todd described to me. He said, I do the gunslinger from the past in present day. Yeah. I need you to give me when the gunslinger started, when he first became the gunslinger in the in the 1800s and give me stories. And he goes, uh Hey, he goes, he calls me kid once in a while, which is kind of funny because we're the same age. But he goes, hey, kid, <laughs> he says, I need a lot of issues in a row. Can you stay on it for a while? And I said, and he goes, I know you can do a lot of books in a row. How many Jonah Hex did you do? And I said, yeah, yeah like 100 and something, 118 or something. He's like, you're the guy for this. And he, he said, you know, you know, you're Western. He goes, you, you know what to do. He goes, here's the perimeters. Here's who the character is. Here's what you can't do because it changes my book in the future. Mm, okay. So there's stuff yeah. I can't go near because it, it it affects it. 
Um, and then what I did is I, I wrote a Bible for Todd of his of the, the gunslinger, who he is, who his parents were, who his grandparents were, how they got to America, what they were in Europe. I went back like two generations because wow. I think I figured if I'm gonna do right by this character, I have to I have to make sure if he even throws says anything in passing, it actually has roots to what the story is. So I so I gave that to Todd and Todd's like, Oh yeah, this is this is insane. And I'm like, yeah, it's like almost 20 pages <laughs> of family history up until he becomes the, the gunslinger. And then, you know, so and I'm working with Todd's universe, which means there's like fantastic elements to it. So yeah. Jonah Hex, we really didn't do that. Right. Jonah Hex yeah. was as grounded as dirt. I mean, mm -hmm. probably the worst thing they did to the movie in the movie was take him out of the grounded yeah. as dirt idea they made him into some crazy you know something science. else that wasn't it wasn't jonah hex to me but no, it again, wasn't, and, that and just josh, my thing josh was such a great choice for jonah hex too which was a yeah. real because yeah, he was so yeah. good he's he's great i mean I, yeah. I love josh you know um but anyway um so with gunslinger there there it's a continuing story i mean the first issue is a little bit of a double issue because there's a lot of pages in it i don't you know todd he keeps the books at a certain price i don't know what he's going to do because Two ninety nine, two ninety nine, all the time, except this, for double this, issues. This one might be a little more because it, it's double. Yeah. But what I took is in in a Gunslinger one and in, in, in Gunslinger one, he has a flashback story, and then there's like an origin story in the back of some other books, and I dissected that, okay. and and then I gave you the before that happens, and then what happens after, right? Nice. And that's in the first two issues, and um, and that sets up who he is, and then. Because we're in it, this is like a post-Civil War. Um, he's making his way west. He's on a mission. He's looking for somebody. But at the same time, he's trying to figure out, like, why am I wearing this? Why, why am I this guy? And then he's got people and and things popping up that just don't like him. And um, it's kind of crazy. So it's like Jonah Hex, like, on steroids a little bit. Um but I will say it's it's actually going to be a lot more grounded than people think, meaning it's not going to be as fantastic, like, say, as Spawn is. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a little more reality based. Um, and then it's going to be those moments where, you know, the shit hits the fan. It's like crazy stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, it's a little different in Todd's books because I'm I'm not doing it where it's like double page splashes and big splashes. I'm kind of doing sequential storytelling. Um, I want you to sit there and get the book and actually read it, dig in and read it, not read it in three minutes, but read it like in 20 minutes and get wrapped up into that world. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's been a challenge for me because it's, it's, you know, unlike Jonah Hex where I can kind of do anything, there's limitations on the character. So I have to kind of understand that, you know, Todd's working on the modern day version of it. There's things that I, I read, you know, I read every issue. And I'm like, oh, I make a note of it. Oh, okay, he did that. So my guy at one point has to be figure out what that quirk is. Yeah, that he's yeah. It, it's, <laughs> kind of, it's kind of an interesting gig. It's it's challenging. Um, and at the same time, I'm kind of letting loose on it a little bit. It's a little crazy. Um, but like I said, I've been handed in the, the uh, seven or eight. I think it's, I'm not working on eight now. So the seven I handed in came back, no notes. Oh wow, that's good. Right? So, he yes. likes the direction. Likes the direction, and he, he and he likes to give notes. Yeah. All right. Um. So, but we discussed what I'm doing. So he's kind of happy with it. And uh, Patrick Reynolds is drawing the hell out of it. It's it's just so awesome. Um, you know, it's one of those books I'm really looking forward for it to come out. Um, yeah. Because I've been sitting on this thing for over a year now, and and. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's tough when you're working on something that long not to see it. But I understand how filmmakers are now, right? That, that's yeah. how they <laughs> for years. Um, yeah, it could be two or three years before you're, anything happens, right? Yeah, I mean, it, but that's comic books. You know, comics are yeah. uh, comics are built that way. Sometimes you gotta yeah. you gotta wait. And uh, in the meantime, I, I do my kickstarters and I do my uh, a yeah. little gig here and there and stuff outside comics. I take on some other work. Uh, I do a lot of stuff that nobody really knows about, and it's okay. I do like a lot yeah. of advertising stuff, and um, oh, you know, I call them I call them gigs that pay bills. Yeah. You know, yeah, gotta do what um, you gotta do, Jimmy. I, yeah, my background is in advertising, so once in a yeah. while, I like a couple of campaign stuff, and uh, I did a thing for Mountain Dew last year that was pretty big monster of a job, and uh, you know, I do things like that. 
but um but that's it man yeah that's that's what's going on I mean, as you know, like Gunslinger outside of Spawn is the most popular thing within Todd's universe that he's created. Uh, Gunslinger, I don't think he realized. I think his first appearance is like in 118. It's just a little blurb. And then like in 120-something, you get your first story. And then all of a sudden, everyone goes nuts over this character. And then, you know, I don't know how many years later, he comes out with his own. And it outsells everything that Todd's doing. And he's like, okay, this is an opportunity that we need to take advantage of. And for him to pick you, Jimmy, that means that this is this will be one of the top books, I think, um, that he comes out. Because he's coming out with like 12 new books this year. And, and then, you will yeah, be far. Yeah. There's, well, the, initially, you know, they asked me about that. Then they asked me about, do we have any other pitch for other books? And, um, you know, and I said, you know, let me kind of just work on this. Like, let me, let me get this, you know, I'm, I'm not looking to take over the world. I I, I want to just make one book that's like great, you know? Um and I feel like I feel like it's it's when you read it, it has a like I said, it's a different beat. Um I think initially when people read it, they might be a little like looking at it going, it doesn't look like Todd, you know, it doesn't have that kinetic but I think you they'll understand what I'm trying to do. It's it's brutal. Um, it's, it's violent as hell. Right. And it's, I love uh, it. yeah, I love it's it. a, lot, <laughs> a lot of blood and guts in it. a lot of blood. And, love... and it's like realistic stuff, like yeah. people getting nailed to walls and shit like that. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's some crazy stuff. And I do have like some fantastic elements in the later issues. Yeah. I deal with, uh, I deal with him, uh, gunslinger going into a circus. That's not quite right. And, um, you know, so there's cool stuff like that. I, you know, it's 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 just a it's just a really great muscle to flex in the brain to to kind of, and I'm looking at his adventures and I'm looking at each story like you know this is, this is kind of building up this part of this guy's, um, you know his his the the way he acts later on yeah. right he's he's kind of because the first year of his life is he's not, he's not quite sure Gunsling is not quite sure what his purpose is he's he just yeah. something happens and he changes, and Nobody's around to tell him, like, well, this is what's going on, kid. It's not there. We tease at it in the book because we see certain characters moving around like chess pieces around them. But our main character is like, I, I just want to stay alive at this point. Yeah. And a lot of times it's just that. There's a whole issue where he's just trying to stay alive. <laughs> um, and, I, and I'm laughing because it's so different from the confident later on gunslinger who's like, yeah. yeah. You oh, know. badass! Ride the motorcycle, yeah. just incredible! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I, my you know, my book in, in my okay. series, he has to earn it. Yeah. You know? Okay, and and yeah, and you, the only way to be like that guy is to earn it at some yeah. point to, to understand. You know, he's got he's got the thing. So it's so it's kind of fun, and uh, I hopefully Todd doesn't kick me off at any time soon because I got a lot going on, and uh, <laughs> you know. So far, so good. I mean, we I, we did the signing in in San Diego. I got to talk to Todd a little bit there, and I get to talk to him more at home. We do we do like a Skype type thing. Yeah, um, but he is a great boss, boy. I, I love him. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been honored to have him on my podcast, and um, I'm a huge collector of action figures, so I probably have about 500 in here. Yeah, I see the, Jonah, I see the Jonah there. I see the Jonah so, headset. So this is the showcase. This is the older one. No, I, I have. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, you have this yeah. one. I assume, yeah. So it comes yeah. with the case, but the little thing knob broke off. But I've had, had this I one for have, a while. Have, I'm, tr I'm trying to look where I have back here on the shelf. Um, I think my hex is upstairs. I think mine is upstairs. Um, well, you should get one from Todd, especially now that you're working with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come I, on, I, Todd. <laughs> no, I, ha I have like, uh, you know, it's it sucks like the the uh, Funko Pops. Oh yeah. They uh they came out with the, uh, this one. Let's see right here. Uh, that Ghost Rider. Yeah, the Ghost Rider one. And That's it's from awesome. A cover, from a cover Tex and I did, you know, years ago. That's so cool, I, man. I had to go out and buy it. Like they, they didn't even send yeah. it. You know, I kind of I kind of make a lot of noise about that because um I still think it's really unfair. I, you know, you're not the only one, um, to be quite honest. I, I've talked to Graham Nolan, and he's like, man, they're coming out with this amazing stuff from Nightfall. And I, I, I go out and buy it, and it's like $69 for the, the set. And then I talked to uh, artist um, John Boy, and he yeah, did a so Starfire, um, and he did all the – and he ha asked me to help him find it. So I found one, and we, we you know, fans sent it to him, me and a few right. others. 
just so he would have one. But I'm like, and what a great like marketing thing for Todd to do is like, as he comes out with these awesome characters, let's tie it to the creators. Let's get so into Todd's, the creators. Todd's, Todd, I expect to get it. You know, Todd yeah, is a yeah. different kind of guy. But Marvel and DC, before COVID, you, you know, you can call them and say, hey, I didn't get one of these. And eventually you'd get one. Yeah, um, yeah. Now, now it's just nobody. Well, we're not in the office, or we don't have any of them around. Or yeah. once in a while, I get you can buy one and we'll reimburse you. And I'm just like, eh. I'm like, yeah, that's a lot of work. Like, it's like the t-shirts. I, I like to just get them in the mail. I don't want to go out to a store and buy like Amanda's Harley Quinn is like on a million t-shirts. Yeah. And we used to have to go out to the store, but and then once in a while, then they then they would send us a package of like five or six. But I would remind them, I'd say, look, they made like 40 already of hers. We went to Walmart. There's a whole line of Amanda Connor Harley shirts. And I'm like, can we just get one of each? We're not asking for you guys made hundreds. Of, I mean, a license for anything is it starts at sixty thousand dollars for one image. Right. You know, and it, the T-shirt's like four bucks, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, which is, I think, also their argument. Well, hey, it's only four bucks. Go buy one. Um but, well, it's not uh, much for them, but it's probably more for you, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, look, I, I, I bitch all the time because I, I, I figure these companies had artists running them. I mean, Jim Lee's still at, yeah. uh, at DC, yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, come on, man, you, that's you know, it, it, it's, it is part of their job is to point out this stuff, right? The frustration of the freelancers. Yeah. But, yeah. But whatever. Well, next time when I run a company, it'll be a little better. My my smaller company, everybody gets everything. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But paper films is literally two or three people, so it's not really a big. I have a hat. Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> but you're killing it on Kickstarter, Jimmy. Like, I, I've been, I've probably got your last like five or six Kickstarters, and uh, they're just this? amazing. I did, yeah. yeah. No, I, I had surgery on my back, so I haven't oh. been able to get it on my boxes. So That's I had two. Piece. I had two. Remember, I had to cancel our first one because they had to do emergency one. Yeah, so yeah. How, you, how are you feeling? No, I'm okay. Uh, in August, I had a spinal fusion because I've been having these shooting pains and it pushed all the issues up. So six weeks ago, they redid uh, spinal surgery above where they did it and they cut bone to open up space up there. So right. it's only six weeks. So far, so good. But I was are born you wearing, with it. Are you wearing the plastic thing around you? Yeah. Well, it's uh, just a Velcro one now. Okay. My, I'm mom, in the six my mom had the same thing. Really? Oh. And you and know, they're scary because the sometimes they don't help you like back surgeries are real weird like that it's like yeah, the she, dice. Had, she had it that the um between the bones of the spine that the bone that wore out and yep. they had to re realign everything so she had to wear this um it's like a corset almost like a like a mm -hmm. just keep her back straight she hated it yeah i bet it's yeah. so uncomfortable and especially like now i live near palm spring so today it's 107 degrees and so to wear anything on top of a t-shirt, you're melting. Oh, you uh, even running there. Yeah, you can't I leave. Love, I, I love Palm Springs. Amanda and I were out there like a month and a half ago. We were we uh we rented Howard Hughes's vacation house. Oh, how cool is that? <laughs> it, it's in Palm Springs and it, it's Howard Hughes's it's it the stuff in it, it it's the house was amazing and it was amazingly cheap and had a pool and the whole thing. But it was like a hundred and something degrees every day, you know? And, and that's like, nothing right now, leading into yeah. August, it gets about 115, 118 out there. It get because we're there's a mountain separating me. So I actually live in Hemet, which nobody okay. knows where that is. So it's there's a mountain. Past, yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. the past it's the past yeah. the, and it's like right there. I know. Yeah, I know on the 10 freeway, you passed us. Yeah. So yeah. we we're about 10 degrees less than Palm Springs. So if it's 106 here, it's 116 there normally. And it's 106 today, so it's crazy, man. Yeah, it's just it's, it's dumb. Uh, it's just dumb that kind of weather. But you're in Florida. Are you what part of Florida are you in? Because you get the humidity. I'm in Clear, Clearwater Beach. So it's so, humid right now, right? Yeah, it's it's humid. We just had that storm pass, right? Yeah. So that was on yeah. the news. Um yeah. we had a lot of rain and uh and um we had some branches come down, but small stuff. Yeah. Um but it was, you know, the, it it actually made landfall over us, like a good, okay. good 60 miles, 70 miles above us. Um, at more like 80 miles. And, um, but you know, we're used to hurricanes. I mean, we know when they're coming, that's the good news about it. Yeah. Like, okay, hurricanes coming in a week, tie everything down, get the hell out if it's going to look really bad. Um, yeah. but you know, there's weather extremes everywhere. So if it ain't fires, yeah. it's, earth, it's, it's weather, you know, everywhere. It's, it's the way of the world. We just roll with it. I mean, 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, if there should be a statue for any person, two people in the history of man, one for the guy who invented the toilet, the other one for the guy who invented the air conditioner. Those yeah. Two, those two people need like, <laughs> statues. Cause, cause, in every state, in every state. That just needs to be an honor. <laughs> those two guys, uh, I think they're both guys. I think yeah. uh, they, they changed the world. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, Palm Springs, nobody would be living there if there was no AC. Oh, no, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Bob, Beautiful, Bob, but crazy. Yeah, maybe just exactly. Bob, yeah. He would, he would be on the floor just to bring in ice like every hour if he was there. Right, right. But, but, uh, yeah, so those things, and then toilets, you know, that's, that's like yeah. the other thing. Um, forget <laughs> airplanes, forget all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Air, yeah. You know, air conditioners and toilets, that's that's really what That's it. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, your good friend, Mr. Joe Casada, who just started. I mean, big news at San Diego Comic-Con. I know you've worked together for a long time. I had the pleasure of going to, yes, I got mine. Where is it? Somewhere right here, too. Uh, but yeah, it was right here. But yeah, I was in. I was in there, and I was so happy for him. Man, he looks so happy to be able to talk about it. I guess he's been sitting on it for a while, and he's supposed yeah. to be on the podcast in a couple of weeks, which I'm excited okay. about because he's such a great guy. But yeah. uh, you must be really happy. I mean, you've already did it with paper film, so he's kind of following in your footsteps, and uh, I couldn't be happier for him. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he. You know, it, uh, he threw a little uh, launch event thing one of the nights in San Diego, and he gave everybody. A copy of the comic. I I don't have it here. I have actually have it in my office. Um, yeah. But he gave a copy of the comic, and then he gave away the pads. The the one. Yeah. Then there's a hat, and there's it. Um, <laughs> but he's he's been working on it for a while since he left since he left Marvel. He's been uh, you know what's what's he gonna do next kind of thing. Yeah, and, yeah. And we're in constant uh, communication over Painkiller Jane and stuff like that. So yeah, I knew this was coming. I, I I'm probably. I, I've been promoting it. I put it on my uh, X page and stuff like that. I, I even put, I think I put his swag that I got on one, yeah. of, the, one of the photos. Um, I saw that, yeah. I asked him, I said, is it okay if I put this? I don't want people going, where's mine? And he goes, no, yeah. you can put it. And I'm like, okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, Joe's got this plan. He's doing these books. Oh. With, uh, and he's going to, as he go. goes, there you go. There's an amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he, you know, he's, he's probably, you know, he's got a big plan to roll out. And I think what you saw in San Diego was just, Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Mad Cave announcement that Mad Cave will be the distributor of the books, yep. and then uh, and then Joe's got you know some stuff up his sleeves. He's got a lot of things going on, so uh, I'm happy for him. I'm supportive of him. I have his back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Any kind of way I can push it, you know, I, I do it. Uh, I push it through my uh, through my mailing list. You know, Paper Films has a mail of like eight thousand people, so uh, we help him any way he can, and it should be interesting. I can't wait to see what he's got coming up. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys have done so many cool things together, and obviously, um, uh, Painkiller Jane, um, Ash. I mean, that's pretty awesome. All these years later, you both have your own thing. I feel like for a lot of creators, that's kind of the route. You see what Jeff Johns is doing with Ghost Machine. Um, Tim Seeley is kind of doing a lot of his own things outside. He's yeah. still doing some stuff for uh, DC, but I feel like right. You know, in, in the tech industry, they call it brain drain when they start to lose a lot of really talent. I don't know what the equivalent of that is for the comic book industry, but you can see Marvel and DC. And, and I get, I guess that's the process, right? About every 20 years, it kind of changes over. New people come in and then yeah. I feel like we're losing a lot of talent in the too big too well, to do their so, own thing. So, you know, so Marvel and DC on some level, Disney and Warner Brothers looks at them as IP generators, right? Exactly, so yeah. they create things they own and they they make movies and TVs and then they give us little thank yous at the end of the movies, right? You know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but what happened was with Image uh, back in the 90s, uh, the creators stepped away. They wanted, the, they wanted the companies to share with them. And Image would not have happened if the companies weren't so greedy. Yeah. Literally, if Marvel and DC said, hey, you know what? We're going to give you 50% of it. You can create the stuff. Well, you probably would have never saw Image Comics. You would have saw everybody working and then the companies pushing us and, of course, you know, celebrating their creators and fighting over talent. They don't fight over talent anymore. Yeah. They, they don't because they, they, what do they have to offer us? We're going to do another Batman story. We're going to, you know, let's be honest. We, you know, we've been doing it for years. I could give a rat's ass about a new Batman story or a new or a Batman book or any of their mainstream stuff. I've been there, done that, right? Yeah. So 
how do you keep the creators interested? Well, you have them create things. But if you're not going to share with them, then that's a problem because yeah. the creators feel like, well, I, I created this. I should have own a piece of it. Um, I wish, again, with both companies that had creators in, in you know, in, in running the place, I wish they pushed harder for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, Vertigo, they would share a little bit and, and then other things walked away from the companies and were successful, sort of like the boys. They didn't want the boys and all of a sudden it became a monster. And yeah. there's all these great stories. But honestly, I don't think Image would have happened if the companies saw the potential for the creators. And they didn't. The, the companies had a feeling that we own the characters, you do our characters, we let you do it. And we pay you. And at the end of the day, we still own everything. And, you know, that's yeah. why you have guys like Roy Thomas mm -hmm. uh, claiming he created, co-created Wolverine. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever he's smoking yeah. where he is. But yeah. um, <laughs> no, I, 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 that has been big, man. I mean, I think a lot of people have lost respect for and Roy Tom. I mean, you talk about a legend. Why oh, no, ruin, growing why up ruin your one, legacy, right? Yeah. Growing up, he's one of my favorite writers. But, don't you know, I feel like that's taking credit for other people's work. Yeah. Um, who aren't around to fight for it, right? Which uh, makes it even why, worse, right? Yeah. And, and well, that's why it kind of smells yeah. weird, right? Yeah. Um, it, I don't necessarily say he's wrong. I'll just say it's kind of weird to come out and say it. If you had, it, you know, but whatever. Who knows what he went through? I have no idea yeah. what it is. Yeah. One day, he'll be a great interview about that. Yeah. Um, I respect him. I love his work. So, I mean, half of my comics that I own have his work. All my Conans, right? Oh, I was going to say, I have Conan 1. That's one of my full sets that I have. I love Conan because of Roy Thomas and yeah, Robert E. Howard and, and everything else. But, man, I, it just well, hurts me to adapted, see that this is happening. He adapted Robert E. Howard. So, what you exactly. read in the first five years were all Robert E. Howard stories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but anyway, anyway, uh, so that's why people needed to step out and do their own thing. Now, there are companies like Image, but you know you have to bring a book to them all done. And I found that rather than going to Image, I can put it out through through a Kickstarter. I was one of the first professionals using Kickstarter in 2011. Um, I tried it out. And, uh, yeah, everybody else caught on. Um, I, I had a good run. Uh, but now... You got to share now, Jimmy. <laughs> and, and I'm not crazy about the big companies using it because it kind of takes the money away from us. Uh, and I'm not crazy about people supporting the big companies using it because I'm like, I get yeah. it, but that's not what your publishing play. You you guys have, when a publisher has a their publicly owned company or they have millions of dollars, it's different than a guy like me that's sitting yeah. there and hiring his buddies and putting out a comic and hoping we're making the money back. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to find corporations that can advertise and get known licenses and make a million dollars on a Kickstarter when we're struggling for 50 grand to pay everybody. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, it's been, it, you know, I'm looking for the next thing all the time. So people go, well, you know, you, I've done like 25 Kickstarters and they're like, well, what's next? And I'm like, I'm coming up with stuff. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the landscape, trying to figure out uh, what people are buying, what, why, why, and why they're buying it. Right. And that's part of why my uh, office is in a comic shop. It kind of helps me yeah. understand what what's going on in the world yeah you're up to date on everything you're probably one of the only creators that are that close to what's happening within the industry because of that yeah i definitely you know i watch the guys order the books and and they yeah. tell me why they're ordering yeah. certain numbers and i also see what's selling you know i see yeah. what, what's you know the, the the alternate covers market's kind of dying a little bit yeah um, you know uh people want just this steady team on a book um, and that's not what the market has been giving them. They keep changing. Yeah. Just when you think you're buying this book, all of a sudden they're announcing, now they have a new guys are running Batman. And every time they do that, you lose some of your audience. Yeah. You gain a little bit for a while, but then you lose a bunch. And, uh, yeah. you know, we're we're, collect we're old to get older guys, so we want Conan 1 to 185, and we want... 100%. Right, right. So every time they restart a number one, it feels like, Eh, you know, I don't know if I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, my latest one that I just received in the mail, because I have just been going, is just uh, the Savage Sword number one. 
I had to get that for the collection too. Yeah, I love the new Savage. I mean, what Jim Zub is doing over at Titan and how he's kind of been let loose because there's really no, I mean, under Marvel, obviously big company owned by Disney. I'm sure there's certain things in a title like that they don't want you doing. He has no restraints and he has been killing it. So yeah, Jimmy, I I think you're seeing a lot of that happen. And it's probably for those. I do like the new Conan. I wish the guy would, the artist, I can't remember his name, would stop. De La Tarte. Yeah, it's, it looks like John Buscemo so much that I yeah. personally have trouble looking at the book. Oh, I got gotcha, you, yeah. I kind of see all the Buscemo. I want to say swipes. I'll say homage. I, how much can you? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It looks it looks like they just took old Conan pages and mixed them up, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, am I the only one that feels that way, though? I might be because the book sells really well. Yeah. It looks so much like John Buscemo. It does, yeah. You're, you're right. Wish, that I the artist that's what a great artist he is. So yeah. I wish he could just kind of do his own thing. His own thing, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I I get it, I get you know, it. But I will tell you the storytelling. I think yeah, is what's Jim's really great. Jim Jim's is great. killing it. He has all these new ideas, and I, I'm just I'm absolutely loving it right now, mainly because of what Jim is doing. Um, yeah, I, li- I like I like that, and I like uh, what uh, Dynamite does with Sonya. Yeah. Oh, uh, Red Sonya has been killing too. Uh, yeah. I just had Thorin Grown back on two days ago. Who okay, is the yeah, current yeah. writer on Red Sonia? And I think she's doing a great job. Plus, her name is Thorin Gronback. I mean, what better name to be on Red Sonia? That's what I told yeah. her. She's Norwegian. I'm like, you sound like Red Sonia's sister just talking about your name. <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, Amanda and I did a year's worth a couple yeah, of years back. And we yeah. did like our hit list of everything we wanted to see in the yeah. comic, and we wrote it I down. Had, and then, and I had it somewhere in there, Jimmy. I was trying to pull and, out books, man. And, and then we, and then we, then we did. We wrote it and gave it to Moritat, and I told them, "Yeah, there's nudity allowed." And then we found out there's no nudity allowed. I'm like, "What? There's no nudity?" At Dynamite. That's why you see, gi- why you see giant boulders and things in front of <laughs> topless Red Sonia running. Around. But I'm like, I, I tried to write. I tried to write it like I was the kid reading. Uh, reading Conan 23 and 24, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like that world, I was just trying to stay in that world for a while. I love uh, it. With that book, and that was so much fun to do for Nick, you know, for yeah. Dynamite. Was fun. That was a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible, Jimmy. Incredible. So as far as, like, obviously we have the Gunslinger title coming up. Is there anything you are working on outside of that that you could share yet? Um, I assume you have another Kickstarter coming. Yeah. You've been I really did. consistent on Kickstarter. The the next one, so I don't do the next Kickstarter until I ship out everything yeah. from the last one. And yeah. I've been going in every day. Um, That's good practice, by the way. That's good practice. Yeah, so I'm trying to find a copy. Let's see if I have a copy of the book. I don't even know if I have one here. Yeah. Uh, but it, was 20, it was 21 Down. It was a Wildstorm book that they gave me the rights to reprint. And um, it's a hardcover. So I'm down to the last 300 of them to ship. It's going to take me another week. Because they're big. They're big books. Yeah. And I put them in a small phone, and then I put it in a wrap thing, and then I put it in a box. So um, so once that is done, I'm figuring two to three weeks, then I'm going to launch the next Painkiller Jane one, and it's Painkiller Jane with G.I. Zombie. And, nice. <laughs> and it's a two, and it's a two-book thing, and uh, I got Amanda did some beautiful covers on it. Sean Murphy did a cover for us that's kicks Ooh. ass. Um, he's so good. He's so good. He, he is. He's. He's. I, I. I adore that guy. He's just a great guy. But he's an yeah. amazing artist. His well. wife's quite. Quite the writer too. Katana. She's doing a little bit on the uh, Elseworld Batman stuff, and obviously like she it. writes a lot of like do. very risque books that she does as novels too, which yeah, are I do, really I popular. Do like the, I do like the comic book couples. I like the the couples. Yeah. That, I, well, I, you're I probably the most popular couple ever, man. I, I'm no, not too sure. Be Walt and Weezy, you know, Walt. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But still, Absolutely. you're up there, man. You're up there. Yeah, but but uh, you know, he Sean is just um, he's one of those guys you watch and it's just gonna get better as he goes. Um, his, oh. he's refining his work every time I see it, and uh, it's so exciting to watch a guy get better. Yeah, yeah. Not, there's not a lazy bone in his body, and um, you could tell his influences, and you know, it's it's just great. But anyway, he did a beautiful cover for us, and uh, and Juan Santa Cruz drew the, the books. The books are all done. Okay. So I'm waiting on three or four covers, um, because it's it's a two cover book, and we're gonna do a photo cover on the back, and uh, um, that's the next Kickstarter, and I have the next three planned. So, yeah. but I can't. I can't do them. The, the the one after that will be sex and violence, but that one I'm still 
waiting on uh, one story to come in. Um, I was actually going to be my next one, and this the person that's doing it had family issues and stuff, so I'm okay. just waiting. Yeah, no reason to rush anybody. That's that's yeah. life that's in the way. I'm like, take your time. I'll be there waiting for you. Um, but Jane is the next one, and uh, yeah, man. I mean, I I that's a constant in my life. I'm constantly yeah. working on those. You know, um, it, until people don't buy them anymore, then I have to figure yeah. out another thing to do. But I, I'm hoping the people that buy it, you know, I don't need to sell a ton. I need to sell enough. Um, the other one, the other one is uh, that I can talk about is um, let me see if I can find the card. My sure. God, this, this my my house is like a, you know, when you're finding, I'm finding like old photos I of uh, Lady Swift. Yeah, this was from um, Pink Cadillac. I worked on that movie poster. That's right so cool. You know, and I'm finding all this weird stuff like old Ash treasure, you know, special editions of Ash. <laughs> um but the the other one is uh and this is a no a november oh here it is okay hang on yeah no problem man it's just it's you know this this room is like the inside of my brain it's just <laughs> this is the next big kickstarter which is the deadly trio deadly trio that looks awesome okay and that is, is that amanda's uh, art right there so no th this here is a adriana milo did that okay piece right there? beautiful um but it's a character. It's character designed by me and Amanda, Billy Tucci, and Brian Polito. Wow! So the three of us, the three of us, wrote the book together, and uh, Adriana uh, Milo drew it. And um, this is. Let me see. When does it say? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I want to say it's November. Let me just check. November. So Brian Polito is going to be running this campaign. We decided. Okay. We've been hanging out so much together for so many years. We decided to just why don't we do a book and create uh, uh, characters? And Amanda and I designed ours, and and uh, you know ours ours is um, Dorian, and then uh, Rian Rian is Billy's, and then Garger is, is uh, Brian's, and and uh, it's kind of fun because you can you can kind of tell who, when who certain people are writing the book. It's it's like one of those comics you read it and you go, oh, that's definitely Billy, and that's definitely Brian, and that's. For sure, that's the overwritten. That's Jimmy, and uh, <laughs> uh, but we decided to do that. We, you know, I helped put together the book for the guys, and then now Brian has to go out and sell it. So yeah, and he does a better Kickstarter than I do. So uh, yeah, he's gonna go out there and sell it, and he he's got a built-in audience that I love. So uh, yeah, I think I think it'll do pretty good. I don't know. I'll see if people get excited for the three of us working together. It'll definitely I think make so. Some noise. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. Fun, why not? You know, <laughs> uh, you get probably asked this all the time, Jimmy. But if if a certain character became available and you had all the money you wanted and you were able to purchase that IP, whether it's something that you worked on at Marvel or DC or something that you wanted to and never got to, is there one character like if I ever could get my hands on it, I would love to make that my own and do whatever you would want to do with it. You know, so Jonah Hex would be my right out of okay. my head. Makes sense. Yeah. I, would, I would like to do, I would also like to do a Tibble Little Black series, right? Um, if we're talking about DC characters, if we're talking about mm -hmm. Marvel. Yeah, you know, this is left field, but I would love to do an ongoing Daughters of the Dragon. So, really? Yeah. yeah. I, I love Misty Knight. Yeah. I like Colleen Wing. Uh, Justin and I drew that miniseries. We probably had the best time uh, doing it. And I just said, you know, I, I so. These are two girls that live in New York. I can write that till my head explodes. You know? <laughs> exactly. And, in the, and and set in the seventies or eighties, not set now, because now it's like a little too. It wouldn't be yeah. as fun back then. It's a yeah. little crazy. And uh, yeah, like you know, the mafia. You got everything going on. There's all kinds of cool stuff you could do. Yeah, New York now is like trying to recover itself. Back then, it yeah. was like a little crazier. And uh, yeah. I grew up in the eighties with new wave music and nightclubs and all that kind of stuff. And and uh, yeah. Those are ones I like. I mean, I, I, you know, there's ones that I, I think of, I, you know, I have a James Bond story in, in me and I keep getting offered from Nikki, you know, you want to do James Bond. And I keep saying, I just want to do James Bond from like between Dr. No and Goldfinger in that five or six years. I only yeah. want to set it there. I don't want to do it now. I don't care about James Bond now because now it's, now it's cell phones and computers, yeah. right? Back then it was like, you know, 
you didn't have cell phones and computers. Yeah, you had a computer. You, you had to use this. <laughs> bikes on it. Um, yeah, you had to use your brain. I, yeah. I, you know, and one day I'll do that. I mean, every time he announces another person doing James Bond, I'm like, okay, they're not. You know, I, I want to, I want to do it almost like the, the week after Doctor No, but right before from Russia with Love, and then maybe after that to Goldfinger. You know, where it's yeah. just he's kind of like, and I look, I, you know, I'm like one of those weird guys. I. I don't love that it doesn't look like the actors. Mm. And maybe that makes me a weirdo. But when I read the comics, yeah, I want to see either Connery or I want to see I want to see one of the actors. Yeah. So when I read the comics, it feels like a generic place card to me. And yeah. I, I think that's the thing that keeps me because I, I pitched, I remember I pitched um at Warner Brothers and they couldn't get the rights because they wouldn't give it. But they mm -hmm. own Dirty Harry, and I pitched Dirty Harry. I said, you know, I want to do it where it's Clint Eastwood's likeness. And I got Bill Sienkiewicz to okay to do the covers and uh, on it. And um, and then, you know, Clint won't let his likeness go. And th there's a whole bunch of stuff. They couldn't make it. But I said, I could write Dirty Harry in 1974 all day long. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and But could you do a Dirty Harry comic where it doesn't look like Clint? Then wh why? Yeah, yeah, what's the point? So for me, I'm like, I'm like you know... When can when can I do a Sean Connery looking James Bond comic like where we can get his likeness use his likeness? Yeah. Call me when you're able to do that for me. That's what you say, right? Because I feel like even the new ones, it, it it's like in the comics when I read them, and and, and again that could be just me. Yeah, yeah. I I love if it looked like Roger Moore if it was, <laughs> or I love if it looked like any yeah. of the guys. Um, but because it's like this generic guy with black hair. They all sort of look like a slicker John Hamm. <laughs> and um, so I can't, so I don't really get into reading them. Yeah. Because of it. And because, and that, so that's the thing that takes me a little bit out of yeah. the place. The, the minute I can, the minute they say, hey, you know what? You can do a Sean Connery type Bond. I would be like, okay, I'm going to get a guy. I know a guy that draws, like, could draw the, the shit out of him. And uh, yeah. Um, so I know that's me, you know, sort of like doing a Western, like doing a, a spaghetti Western mm -hmm. with Clint, with a man with no name, but you can't use Clint. Like, why? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, for me, that's the character, you know? So, um, you know, Batman, it's easy. He wears a mask and all that. Right. But these are yeah. characters that rely on their face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's there's, that's there's, the character. Yeah. I mean, Clint Eastwood, it's, it's all cowboy hat and shadows. Like, you know, it's yeah. all like, you know, I mean, the camera's <laughs> right here on him, you know? Um, so uh, that's probably why I, I stayed away from that stuff. And I, I I realize as I'm doing this interview, I sound a little crazier and crazier all the time. But, <laughs> no, but I, not at I, all. I have, I have these kind of limitations for me, and I, I know what I would buy. Yeah. And um, so I, I know what I don't buy, right? I, I love the, a lot of great writers doing the new Bond books, but it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like Bond to me unless it's one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Hey, la last question for you, Jimmy. I want to be respectful okay. of your time. You know, so many people have been in the industry um, and had the success that you have had. I have noticed they've stayed away from long runs. And I know you were talking about Spawn and you're on right. issue eight. And it seems like that's going to be an ongoing from what we're yeah. reading. Yeah. Um, what what is the attraction that would bring you to something, not that you're not doing run long runs on your own, but there's gaps right. in between, right? But this right. is a monthly comic and you're seeing most people with your success, they don't wanna deal with that. They're doing four issues, six issues once a year on a story and they move on to the next thing because they don't wanna get stuck on 50 yeah. issues or something. Well, right. do you have that same kind of mindset or you kind of enjoy it? You wanna have that. If if so, with Harley Quinn, right? When, when Amanda yeah. and I came off at Harley Quinn, they told us, no matter what you do, it's going to get canceled by issue seven or eight. So uh, Dan DeDio told us that. Dan said, look, okay. you know, it never Harley doesn't really sell. Last series got canceled. It was good, but, you know, nobody bought it and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we want you to do a new series. And Amanda and I said, well, can we do whatever we want? Right. So Amanda changed the costume. I said, I can't write a book with, with the Joker in it because it's like an abusive relationship. Can I have her move out? And I and I said to him, I said, you know, the the issue I have with Harley is she's a secondary character in the Batman universe. Yeah. So the only way people are going to get interested in Harley, if I do Harley, is if I can create take her somewhere else and then create her own 
uh, you know, supporting yeah. characters. So then it's Harley's book. It's not Batman family book. Sort of like with, like after we left the 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 comic, the cartoon did. It went right back to yeah. Gotham, yeah. and put Harley in a bar with a hundred supervillains. My yeah. thing is, and and I, honestly, that's what the movies do, right? They don't even have yeah. enough faith to have yeah. Harley Quinn as just a character, uh-huh. like Deadpool. Um, they have to stick eight hundred. You know, they have to stick the birds of prey in it, or they have yeah. to stick Suicide Squad. And that to me is like the biggest fail yeah, for them. Yeah. Because, and so what we did on Harley is we created, I mean, we've done over 120 issues, I think, of Harley in a row. Which was supposed uh, to be seven. Right. It's supposed to be seven. <laughs> um, and it became a monster. Nobody saw that coming, right? It, it was outselling Batman and JLA at one point. Yeah. Right? No, it was so, one of the top DC. I read the article. It was one of the top um, so, uh, yeah. comics during that time frame. Yeah. And um, so nobody saw that coming. Trust me, we didn't either. Um, Amanda and I decided to write her life. Like we, like we're gonna write where she lives, who her friends are, who her parents are, how where she lives influences who she is, without having to bring the Batman family into the book all the time. And of course, we brought Ivy in as a girlfriend, and we did go back to Gotham, I think, three times in the series, which is not a lot for a hundred and something issues, right? Yeah. Um, but we realized that in order for this character to exist on its own. The supporting character in her universe are going to have to be a reflection of who she is and also their existence defines who Harley is, right? Mm-hmm. The reason she is friends with these people is because of this and because of that. And what that does, it strengthens who the character of Harley is. And that's why that book did so well is because because the book was never about a story arc. It was never about villain of the month. It was just... Here's where Harley's go. It's Tuesday and Harley's going to the supermarket and sees this thing happen. And it, it was like, it was so crazy. Um, but, and we wrote it and we just kept writing it as one big story. So if you read our first issue all the way up until the Birds of Prey book we did, it's actually one continuous story. Yeah. So much so at the time, we told Dan, you can't put Harley into another book unless we're doing the other book. And that's why Little Black Book and the specials came because they wanted more Harley product, but we said, you can't just give it to people to yeah. do. It has yeah. to be us or nobody. And so a hundred and something issues in, the thing sold like crazy. It's three omnibuses big. The omnibuses are sold out. They still p- keep the putting them out. There's a reason why staying on it for a while is you create that world. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. I think DC screwed up. I think the minute we left, Frank Thierry kept a little bit of what we did. But after Frank, every new writer decided to make Harley whatever they wanted. Yeah. Look at look at the book now. Look at the sales now. They're, they're nowhere near. People just don't buy it. Yeah. They're not even the top. It's not even in the top 100. No. Now from because the last time I looked. Yeah. We literally gave them the game plan of what to do. Yeah. And they threw it right out the window. They put it right back in yeah. Gotham. And it's all about Harley and Ivy in Gotham. When our book was had Harley and Ivy in it, but we did the moonlighting thing. We never had yeah. the we, we know yeah. we, we kept them like they're, yeah. they're friends once in a while they hook up but it's not what the book's about it's about her life yeah. um so when you say well do you want to stay on something for a long time i felt like with harley I, we wanted to stay on it for as much as we can define who she is and yeah. uh you know and we had the blessings of uh of bruce uh tim and paul dini loved the book they, they love yeah. what we're doing you know, people saying, "Oh, you're taking Bruce and t- and uh, and uh, and uh, you know, Tim. you're taking Bruce and and, and Paul's character oh. and throwing it out the window." And I said, "No, we're a- we're actually it's next day on on this stuff." You know, they they love the book; they get what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so when you stay on something that long, what happens when you have a career is people know you for that character. Yeah, stayed on Jonah Hex for hundred and something issues. People know me. Oh, he's the guy he did Jonah Hex. I did Marvel Knights. We yeah. did Deadpool. I did Punisher. I did a couple of years yeah. of Punisher with Garth and Steve. Yeah. He's the Punisher guy. I wrote a year worth of Deadpool. Anybody likes Deadpool knows my <laughs> So I think it's a smarter move. I A lot of guys think that they jump around, they're getting a lot of coverage. The problem with that is that that's okay, but a career is like a roller coaster. You have ups and downs. I For me, it was like anchor very popular anchor, then writer, and then all of a sudden, okay, event comics, yeah, Marvel Knights, uh, 
Power Girl. We did 12 issues Power, of Power Girl. Power Girl, yeah. That defined who Power Girl was. Right? And it's never it's never been back the same. I, I like I don't want to throw anybody in the bus, but I've been buying Power Girl now and it's unrecognizable from that time frame. It's um that, so the, the, and that, that's what's frustrating as a fan, Jimmy, is yeah. you know, I, I understand why uh, new writers don't want to be on and they don't want to be defined by that one character, but right. man, as fans, we want consistency and we want really good storytelling. And when we find that person, man, it's devastating when that person leaves. That's why you see the backlash and everything, because now we know it's gonna change. A character's gonna change. We just know it oh. and more today than ever. Oh, I mean, I mean, Power Girl. We did 12 issues. That trade book sold. Yeah. I can't tell you how many. Th they re-released it again, and it's one of their top sellers again, mm -hmm. right? Everybody who had one has bought another one. Yeah. What the hell is going on, right? We only did 12 issues. Now, we put Power Girl in Harley because, as yeah. uh, Dan DeDio used to call it, the Jamanda universe. Meaning <laughs> our characters kind of stay in our books. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because with Power Girl, it's like, here, here's the blueprint. This is the Power Girl everybody loved. Why would you relaunch it and throw all that out? Not only that, like get her cat and make a different cat. Like yeah. what is, you know, why would you do that? And it's really funny because I'm in a comic shop and I see what sells. Yeah. You know what sells on Power Girl? The covers that have the old Power Girl look on them. Exactly. That's it. <laughs> yeah. How would, so this is a big topic um, on X and everywhere else, Facebook. Now I'm not, uh, and I'm not putting down, and I'm not putting down the people. No, 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 a hundred percent. It's just it, no, no. I, I, that's why I try to keep my podcast positive. I never mention right. names. But no, you no. have to, you have to be real, though, right? I mean, right. there's times when the character was written better, and uh, yeah. that's just the reality of it. It's not that this person's not talented. I like Jason right. Aaron wrote an amazing Punisher run. I right. didn't care for it because I'm a Frank Castle guy. That's not the story that I want. But you yeah, can't me, deny I, 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 that I, I, Jason Aaron isn't a great writer. He's an amazing no, no, writer. But if it's not Frank Castle, it's not the Punisher. It's not Frank Castle. It's not, that's right? And right, they, they purposely wanted to get rid of him. They did. And now Punishers, I don't care who they bring back. It's not the Punisher anymore, right? So okay. so those are the things that, as a fan like me, drive me crazy right. um, when they change characters like that. So that's why we're like, man, we just need consistency with a good writer um, right. for a long time. But I, I almost feel, Jimmy, those days are over. I, I don't think we're going to get too many. I mean, Chip Zdarsky has been on Batman for a long time. Um, but, you know, everybody else, man, they're changing right. like every... I mean, Scott, 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 Snyder did, Scott Snyder did Batman for a while, but now yeah, he's 52, yeah. Batman. But now it's a different yeah. Batman. Absolute universe, yeah. Yeah, completely yes. different. I mean, different yeah. skill. We'll see how that world does. Uh, you know, I like Scott Snyder. I think uh, Court of Owls is one of my favorite... Yeah. Um, Storylines of sure. you know Nightfall. It's it's up there like my I, top ten. But that's super talented, man. He's a great writer. Huge him major. And Tom, him and Tom King for me, they're both great. Yeah, great, great writers. writers. Mark yeah. Wade, Mark Wade, good writer. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mark Wade got his chops from doing long term series. He did big yeah. series, Flash, and you know, yeah. all that stuff. Anyway, go on. You have a question. I'm sorry. Oh no, I, I was just asking um, about that long term, and now you're on Spawn. Um, but right. I think you kind of answered it right, but. I guess it, it's got to be something that really you're passionate about. And if Todd is saying, hey, here's the title, do your thing, Jimmy, we trust you, we know you're, right. then all of a sudden, I guess that makes the, the longer run uh, more attractive to someone like you that really could probably do whatever you want for DC and Marvel if they, yeah. right? I'm, I'm looking at uh, Gunslinger like like getting on a rodeo bull. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm putting that rope a couple of times around I'm gonna hold on to it as long as I can and ride that out. Yeah, you know? good, until good, good. Me, until he tells me get off, you know. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, as far as Marvel and DC, you know, um, when they approach me, they, it's funny because we did offer to do the new Power Girl series, and they passed. Amanda and I, wow. and I use and I use the argument. I'm saying I don't know who you have doing it, but if it's me and Amanda, I guarantee it'll sell more. Yeah, a hundred percent. You get so many of the fans that left, like right. that. Right. So, um, so you know, I I kind of I love I I love both companies. I have friends at both companies. Yeah. But they do things different than I would. So mm -hmm. I have to respect it. And you know, yeah. um, like Harley, I think I still have more Harley stories to tell. Right. But it has to be the right. They have to come to us and say, you know, we want yeah. you to do what you do. We don't want you to. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I never did preachy Harley. 
Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, Harley was just the Harley. If you wanted the 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 core of the character, Amanda and I wrote was Harley's Bugs Bunny. She she stirs the shit. And then she takes a step back and watches the chaos. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and sometimes profits off of that chaos, right? <laughs> and she does. And, and um, yeah. But she's also, you know, she's protective of her friends. Yeah. And she's... Yeah. Um, so, you know, the thing is, you, you, you do time on these characters. Sometimes you revisit them. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, when Amanda and I are working on a couple of things, right now we're working on a new pro book, you know, so that'll okay. be for next year. Um, but you know, not, not everything, it, it, it's really interesting to see the emails that come in every day <laughs> and, and, you know, the, the job for me is to say the superpower has to be, yeah. I, I want that money, but yeah. that's not for me or yeah. I was there already. I did it. Somebody else could do this better. Yeah. Um, it, it really takes getting older to understand that because younger me took everything. I yeah, mean, yeah, obviously, I took everything. I worked on Countdown. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, I took anything. Uh, I tried to quit Countdown three times. I think <laughs> you know, they, they wouldn't let me quit. I kept arguing. I kept arguing, saying this makes no sense. I, <laughs> you know. Um, well, but, if anybody uh, hears this and learns that you were offered something at DC with all the changes that are being made, and you didn't take it, they're going to be devastated. Um, we can leave it there, but I think they'll be devastated. I think one or two things were offered to me where I wasn't right for it. Or, yeah, okay. or, yeah fair enough. Yep. Or I was told I could do whatever I want, and then that wasn't the case, right? It was like they wouldn't want to do If somebody's coming to me and it's, their storyline's already worked out, I, I probably yeah. don't want to do it because I'm like, you know, yeah. get, a, get a new guy to do that one, you know? Yeah. Um, I do have characters I love that if they ask me, I would work on it again. Yeah. If they asked me to do a new Jonah Hex series, I would do it. I would, nice. I would actually call, and I would call Justin to do it. With yeah, because um, we never got, we never got tired of that book. You know, the yeah. book All Star Western. We did get to tell the last, yeah. the last story with Dar I, I have that one somewhere too. I, I, yeah. I picked that up. I don't know where I had it out, but yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's one of. I, I got to tell you, Darwin Cook thought he was going to win an Eisner for that one. He really did. Yeah. He thought he would be nominated for that one. He was. Yeah. He got nominated for Parker instead, but he said. I really deserved it for that Jonah Hex issue. And I'm like, I yeah. agree. I agree yeah. that last yeah. issue was like heartfelt, you know? <laughs> um, but um, yeah, but you know, that's that's the, the nature of the business. I So I put my energy into my own things, you know, um, Painkill Jane very close to my heart. Yeah. Probably in the next couple of years, I'll be collecting them into a couple of books so people could Good. just buy four volumes and get everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because, because I do it like every year for the past... 20 years. So I have a lot of Jane stories. Oh, yeah. People have never seen them. Like, if you didn't back the mm -hmm. Kickstarter, you don't know they exist. And uh, Exactly, yeah. You know, and, and uh, but, uh, yeah, that's it, man. You know, keep busy, have fun. Like I said, I, I, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm a comic buyer like yourself, so I kind of yeah. sit there, I do get pissed off at when things aren't the way I want them. And a lot of times I go, you know what, I don't need to collect this character for a while. That's what um, I do. Yeah. And I just keep it to myself. I try to keep things positive, but there's a lot of titles that I no longer buy anymore. Um, yeah, I, used, from, I used to buy X-Men all the time. I used to buy yeah. X-Men all the time. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I have no interest in the X-Men anymore. Yeah. I, yeah. If, I, if I want to read them, I go back. I think I have some books. That yeah. I like. I have go back to the book. old uncanny stuff. The, yep. Okay. <laughs> I have my Conan on the bus. I have my, you know, rights and stuff. And yeah. Um, I try to I try to buy like I said I try to buy uh, a lot of European stuff you know I I, I want to try different new stuff and uh, yeah you know, it, it's sort of like traveling I don't want to go to vacation the same place every year I want to I want to go someplace I've never been so um, well I look forward to your first manga book in the next couple of years Jimmy <laughs> it sounds like that's the direction I have, like, I have like uh, I have I have like I've been writing down ideas I have like ten crazy ideas. Um, and I got to pitch one. So we'll see. There you go. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, Jimmy, thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's a pleasure to get to meet you. I'm um, big fan of all of your work. Um, and please tell Amanda as well, the impact that you two have had on a lot of comic book fans is, uh, is quite large, uh, right? And so I have quite a, a few boxes with both you and Amanda in there. So please tell her I said hello. Um, and thank I you will. for all of your hard work. And we all appreciate right. you. And I cannot wait. 
um, till November. It sounds like you got a couple really good well, things. When, when we uh, when it, when it comes out, let's do it. Let's do it a thing where we can discuss the first issue. Yeah, I love it. Let's do it. But we can break down the first. If you have any questions, you can ask me about it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be, that'd be fun to do a breakdown of a book. That's that's kind of cool. Like I right would love that. Like right when Let's, it comes out. All right, so I'll reach back out to you as soon as it's released, Jimmy. Sounds great, Tom. All right, all right. until the next time, my friend. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you, and have a great rest of your week. Thank you. You too, buddy. Thank you. All right. Talk soon. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.